Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'll be talking about the second concept of kidocratic education, polymorphous perversity. Ever since I landed in Canada, I have been invigorated by social movements, starting with Quebec City protests in 2001. I was in Toronto then and saw photos in the Toronto Star. Amidst pictures of water cannons and police in riot gear and forms of conflict, there was one picture of a young woman dancing, surrounded by her friends, with an expression of great joy. I did not know the phrase then, but I now think that she was displaying a political form of polymorphous perversity. For Freud, infantile sexuality is polymorphous compared to that of adults, which is focused on genital sexuality. An infant's sexuality and curiosity overlap so much that they could be the same thing. But children's hedonist curiosity clashes with the project of education, which demands abstinence and distracts them with culture. In his essay, Civilized Sexual Morality and Modern Nervous Illness, Freud says, the sexual behavior of a human being often lays down the pattern of all his other modes of reacting to life. So abstinence, whether forced or coaxed, forecloses their real interests with repercussions on what they become when they are adults. Freud was no fan of abstinence. He says, I have not gained the impression that sexual abstinence helps to bring about energetic and self-reliant men of action, or original thinkers, or bold emancipators and reformers. Far more often it goes to produce well-behaved weaklings who later become lost in the great mass of people that tend to follow, unwillingly, the leads given by strong individuals. From this, Adam Phillips, a contemporary psychoanalyst, concludes, democracy is only for those who can bear their sexual aliveness. He urges adults to not only allow children develop their own sexual morality, but to cultivate it in ourselves. He asks us to question our dependence on the knowledge from the past. Indeed, the past is overdetermined by patriarchy and adult supremacy. All patriarchal religions are organized by priests. And as Nietzsche says in Antichrist, the priest rules through the invention of sin. In the story of original sin, Eve is punished for learning from the animal and exploring nature. The story forbids learning, punishes curiosity, demonizes the snake, and blames woman for experimenting with nature. With sin, priests foisted upon humanity an anti-nature, anti-pleasure, and anti-science ideology. Nietzsche has been proved right by our current climate bankruptcy. So kidocracy calls for a conscious cultivation of polymorphous perversity, talking back to centuries of bad education. It claims our right to love nature, honor pleasure, and practice science as a mode of experimental inquiry. In 2018, students of Ontario rallied against a repeal of a modern sex education curriculum by the conservative government. They were led by an indigenous genderqueer student, Indigo Arscott. The conservative government had sought to curb knowledge about masturbation, queer sexuality, and gender identity. Indigo also organized a rally to protest the death of Tina Fontaine, an indigenous teen, pointing to the disproportionate deaths of indigenous women and governmental inaction in Canada. The inaction is deeply rooted 
in Canada's history in which the Anglican Church worked in tandem with the colonial government to destroy native culture and nature. And Greta Thunberg left school for a whole year to teach adults the importance of nature. Her close connection to animals, not only her pets, but wild animals dying because of global heating that instigated that strike. In the film, I am Greta, you see adults clouded by the world of work, business as usual, as against Greta's call to reduce carbon em emissions. Students in Ontario also fought against a defunding of public education, which led to overcrowded classes. And the conservative government defended the overcrowding as a prep for the world of work. Kidocracy declares the rule of minors and minorities, calling for a play-centered economy. It overturns the general tendency to make the adult the measure of humanity. The adult works and the child plays. And it is by the overvalorization of the work ethic that adults assume the right to control not only the play of children, but also of other adults. I see kidocracy as an educational philosophy that's aimed at adults parents, teachers, activists, artists, scientists, students, calling for a reinvention of humanity modeled on the child. It invites us to emulate the child in her polymorphous perversity, to question the value of work that denies nature and our pleasure in nature so that we can recognize that we are nature. In my next video, I will talk about the third concept of kidocratic education, the gift or the philosophy of expenditure. Till then.